In this section, we will focus on techniques used for protein synthesis and sequencing. There's one major synthesis technique used, solid phase synthesis, and two methods for protein sequencing, Edmund degradation and mass spectrometry. Peptides are chemically synthesized by the condensation reaction of the carboxyl group of one amino acid to the amino group of another. Protecting group strategies are usually necessary to prevent undesirable side reactions with the various amino acid side chains. In solid phase synthesis, the first amino acid has its end terminal protected to avoid unwanted reactions. And then the carboxy terminal is reacted with the solid support of a column to covalently crosslink it with the column beads. Excess amino acid is then washed from the column. The protective group on the amine terminal, labeled Y here, is then removed. The second amino acid to be added to the chain has its end group protected with the Y group, and then it's added to the column, where the amide bond is formed. The column is then washed to remove any unbound amino acids, and then the Y group is then removed from the nascent peptide. The process is repeated until the desired length of the peptide is formed. The peptide can then be cleaved from the resin, Usually, peptide synthesis is limited to a maximum of 70 residues before the solid support becomes unstable. Edmund degradation is a method used to sequence the amino terminal residues of a protein. It can be useful if you have isolated an unknown protein and want to work backwards to identify the gene that encodes it. With this method, it's possible to sequence the first 50 to 60 residues. In this method, phenyl isothiocyanate is reacted with an uncharged N-terminal amino group under mildly alkaline conditions to form a cyclical phenyl thiocarbamyl derivative. Then under acidic conditions, this derivative of the terminal amino acid is cleaved as a thiazolinone derivative. The thiazolinone amino acid is then selectively extracted into an organic solvent and treated with acid to form a more stable derivative that can be identified using chromatography or electrophoresis. This procedure can then be repeated again to identify the next amino acid. Mass spectrometry offers another way to fully sequence proteins. This can be accomplished with a top-down approach in which proteins are analyzed intact, or the proteins can be digested first using proteases and the fragments then analyzed by mass spectrometry. For example, trypsin cleaves proteins on the carboxyl side of lysine or arginine residues, except when they are followed by proline. Thus, digesting a protein and then running the mass spectrum can create a mass peptide fingerprint that is characteristic of that protein, as shown in figure A. Each peak can then be analyzed further by MSMS to reveal the sequence of the individual fragments, shown in figure B. This information can then be used to search within the spectral database mascot to aid in the identification of the protein, shown in figure C. This diagram gives a better representation of the experimental procedure used in protein sequencing via mass spectrometry. First, a protein lysate is created from a tissue or cell culture sample. The protein mixture can be separated by SDS page. A single protein band can be isolated and then digested using trypsin. The fragments can then be analyzed by mass spectrometry to produce a fingerprint of the protein. Each peak can then be further analyzed by another round of mass spectrometry 
to reveal the amino acid sequence of that fragment. In the next section, we will discuss methods for elucidating the three-dimensional structures and folding patterns of proteins.